Today I'm going to highlight a few of the major resources available for research on psychiatric topics. Psychiatric topics may be approached from two directions, psychology or medicine. While the difference can be subtle, it may affect your research choices if your topic is heavily focused on personality or life experience on one hand, or biochemistry or prescription treatments on the other. We are going to look at Psychiatry Online, PsychInfo, and PubMed, a combination of databases that will cover both angles. In most cases, students will be able to complete their research projects using just these databases. In order to demonstrate today's databases, I will use an example project. Today's example is a student paper researching the connection between bipolar disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We are going to start at the University of Alabama website. Start with databases. Now choose psychology and click find databases. All of the databases we are looking at today can be found in this list. The first stop in our research project is Psychiatry Online. This is a subscription database published by the American Psychiatric Association. The most important feature of Psychiatry Online is the DSM library. It contains a complete searchable online version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 5th edition. The DSM-5 is considered the universal authority in the U.S. for description of mental disorders, so it's a great place to get a good understanding of the topic. It's also really useful for making sure that you are using current terminology in your paper, as many disorders have been renamed over the years and you may see older terms used in some of your sources. Clicking in the Search DSM box and typing Attention Deficit searches the entire Psychiatry Online database. I'm going to limit to Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. That narrows our choices to 26 results. The first result is the one we are looking for, Diagnostic Criteria and Codes. Reading through the entry, we learn that it is classed as a neurodevelopmental disorder and that Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is the official name for the condition. There is also information here about prevalence, development, and risk factors, as well as similar or related disorders that health professionals may need to rule out when making a diagnosis. At the bottom of the page, you can see the list of references the authors used when writing this article. The next step is to search the DSM for bipolar disorder. The first entry in the list is the one that we want. We learn that the condition is commonly called bipolar disorder and that it is divided into two subsets, bipolar disorder 1 and Bipolar Disorder 2. Reading to the end of this entry, we discover an important concept that will help us with further searching, comorbidity. This concept refers to the fact that certain disorders frequently occur together. It will be a useful keyword when we search other databases because we are specifically interested in learning about the ways bipolar disorder is associated with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Returning to the top of the page is a list of articles on the right-hand side. These are articles found in Psychiatry Online that are related to the disorder described on the page. These are articles found in Psychiatry Online that are related to the disorder described on the page. Many of these articles are full text. They may be a useful way to jumpstart your collection of research articles. Now it's time to go looking for research articles. Going back to the library's list of psychology databases, this time we're going to choose PsychInfo. We're going to start by clicking something called the thesaurus. This will help us to find the exact search terms we can use to get just the articles we need. We start by typing bipolar into the search box and clicking browse. Over here on the right, I'm going to check boxes for explode, and major concept. 
Explode will add related terms and major concept tells the database to only give me articles where these terms are the main idea. See what happens when I click add. Now I search for attention deficit in the same way. And check explode and major concept again. I have to make sure to change the drop down to and so I only get articles that have all of my terms. Now I just need to add a keyword. I type the word and again and then comorbid with an asterisk at the end. The asterisk is so that I get all forms of the word. This search has retrieved 151 items, which is a nice start, but we can limit it to make it better. I start by limiting to peer-reviewed because most assignments will limit you to peer-reviewed research or scholarly journals. If you want to make sure to have only recent research, you can limit by date. I'm limiting to the last five years in this example. Now we have 56 relevant articles to choose from. If I needed to limit further, I could choose several other factors, such as the methodology the researchers use, the population they studied in their research, or the age of the research subjects. Click the article title for more information and links to the full text, if available. PDF opens in a new window and you can save it to your computer. If you click the cite link on the right, it will show you how to cite this article. Just be sure to proofread because occasionally database citations like this have errors. So far, we've been looking at databases that the University of Alabama subscribes to. However, there's a very useful database that we can use that doesn't cost a cent. PubMed is a government site run by the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health. We're still going to go to it by way of the library databases, but that's just because it's an easy way to find it. Look for it here under Other Useful Resources. PubMed has its own vocabulary, just like PsycInfo did, and it can look intimidating, but we're going to use it in a really simple way. You'll need to open Mesh Database in another tab, and then change to Advanced Search before starting. On this Mesh page, you'll need to click again to go to NLM Mesh homepage, then click Online Searching under Mesh Browser. First, choose Main Heading Terms, because all we want to get here is a search term. I search for Bipolar Disorder first. I find that bipolar disorder is the correct term. I copy the phrase and go to my search tab. I paste my search term in the first line and choose mesh terms from the drop down. This is the simplest choice for using mesh. Then I go back to the mesh browser and search for attention deficit. Once again, I find the term I need, in this case, Attention Deficit Disorder with Hyperactivity. I copy it again, go back to my search, and just as before, select Mesh Terms, and then paste it into the search box. Now I add a keyword. Searching in all fields, I type comorbid with an asterisk, so I get all forms, just like we did in PsycInfo. We have 324 results now, but we can limit them. I can limit to the last five years, I can limit to full text, and then I can limit to only results that are in English. Free articles are marked in red, like this. Clicking on the article takes us to a place where we can get a PDF copy of it.
Once the PDF is loaded, you can save it to your computer. Articles that are subscription only are not as easy to find, but I'm going to show you a special trick that you can use here at UA. First, click on the article you want. Copy the title of it. Now, go to the UA Library website and just paste that title directly into the Scout search box. Most of the time, it will be your first search result. Sometimes full text is directly linked. In this case, we have to click this link to check whether UA has subscription access. In this case, it does not, but there is a link to get to it by Interlibrary Loan. Let's try another. Once again, I copy the article title and just paste it directly into Scout. You may need to log in at this point. At this time, we have linked full text. Again, you can save the article to your computer. Returning to PubMed, if you find an especially useful article, you can click Related Citations to find articles on related research. If you're in a hurry or don't have library access, you can limit your search to free full text right here. Now that we've found these great resources, it's important to cite them correctly in the final paper. For a psychiatry or psychology paper, you'll probably use APA style. The citations in EBSCO and other places can help you get started, but they aren't always correct. The library has the official style manuals to help you do the job right. Just start at the UA Libraries Databases page and search for APA. Click through to the complete online APA style manual. It has the correct form for everything from journal articles to social media. This concludes this presentation on psychiatry resources. Come on into the library if you have further questions. We're always happy to assist.